Welcome to a new episode of Immutable Conversations. Uh, today I'm very happy to have with me uh, Veronica and Dimitri, which uh, do a lot of open source work in the Hustle community. They are, well, a, a great team of open source software and tutorials and e everything there. Uh, so, you know, the idea for today is to talk a bit about Haskell, you know, uh, what's the position in, in like functional programming community. And also I'm very curious to know how do you handle all of this work you do, how many, all of these libraries and so on. I mean, I'm, I'm the maintainer, half maintainer of one, and I'm already struggling with like two op open uh, issues in, in the GitHub repo. So uh, I, I'm really wondering about that. So, well, uh, I've been doing a bit of research and, well, I, I think that uh, both Dimitri and Veronica have been everywhere in the globe doing, doing, uh, doing Haskell. So, I mean, I, I've seen like, uh, you have like uh, Singapore and Russia and uh, you are now both in the UK, right? Yes. Yes, that's right. So uh, I'm... First of all, thanks for having us. Yeah, we're going to be here for work in Haskell. Nice. So uh, I actually, my, my first, uh, what I first wonder is, you know, you've been doing uh, Haskell for a lot of time. Well, uh, definitely more than most people who are now starting with it. Uh, so I would like to ask, you know, what, what, uh, what moved you to, to start, uh, learning Haskell like, uh, a few years ago. And, and because at, at that point, most things were like Scala, Clojure. So, so why did you choose, uh, each of you to, to start doing Haskell? Well, uh, for me, I started learning Haskell at the university. Uh, there we have a functional programming course and it was in Haskell. But uh, when I was uh, studying that course, I didn't really got Haskell and why it's so cool. And um, but then I spent like summer in my free time learning Haskell because I was really interested. Why is it, what is this technology? And it turn, it's turned out to be really cool. So it was really fun. I had several failed attempts to learn Haskell. So I tried first and failed, didn't get it. Then tried second, I moved a little bit further, but then also I wasn't getting it. But once it uh, hit me and I got really into it. And after that, I was teaching uh, a functional programming course uh, in the more University in St. Petersburg. And it's one thing when you just uh, learn Haskell and do some stuff, but it's absolutely another level when you teach Haskell to students. So you really need to understand everything to be able to answer questions and to explain everything. Uh, so it was really fun and I really got into the Haskell. And after that, I uh, found my first job in Haskell and there was no way back. <laughs> yes, and then only Haskell. Cool. For me, it was a bit quicker than that. Uh, I also started uh, in the university when I was doing my uh, master degree. We had a compiler course in there, and uh, I started to write that in Kotlin. But when we were introduced into parser combinators, it was mentioned at some lecture, and I started digging into that and came to Haskell, and I decided to rewrite whole project to Haskell. And after that, I became very interested in the language and started to do uh, more and more stuff with that. Uh, yeah, this is how I get into that. It's nice. And, and I'm also wondering, so, so I don't know if your colleagues also use Haskell or they use another tools, but also how do you see Haskell, you know, in this broad uh, functional programming community where do you see Haskell being there? Um, I think uh, Haskell has a really like uh, distinguished position because it's a purely functional language. It has, it supports a lot of idioms and it's like 
I guess the only language which is lazy by default. So the style of writing code in Haskell is unique. So you probably can find uh, each uh, feature in uh, most of the ma mainstream languages, even mainstream programming languages. But the, this unique combination of syntax and the style of writing program and uh, paradigms in Haskell just uh, makes it really unique and uh, distinguishable. I, I agree. I also want to add that currently Haskell also used in a lot of spheres already. Uh, I personally worked in the healthcare company, uh, in the remortgage platforming company and reinsurance company. So as you see, uh, companies like that uh, choose Haskell uh, to be more productive and uh, to have the better maintainable uh, platforms and uh, applications. Uh, but most of that uh, companies are usually uh, new ones and um, most of the companies are actually startups. I guess it's uh, because it's very hard to move something from legacy to Haskell. But if you're starting something from scratch, I see more and more people uh, getting the idea that Haskell would be the right choice as they need uh, main, maintenance capabilities and also some performance and um, yeah and type safety of course and yeah, such it's actually finance. nice that you mentioned all all these spheres because you know these these are you know like insurance healthcare that looks the kind of places where you know if you are there you've you've you're starting to be mainstream at least um, yeah <laughs> but, but <laughs> have you seen you know, in, in these years, a lot of changes uh, in the community. You know, Haskell used to have this this idea that people, you know, they they are like sort of uh, type wizards, which which uh, encode things in this uh, complicated ways. But but I guess uh, maybe you've seen this thing changing uh, over the few years. I don't know. What's what's your opinion? Yes, this is actually a tough one. Uh, because it's really depends on the team and the company uh, that starting the project. I, I was involved in the architecture decisions of one project, uh, like from the scratch to that. And I can say for sure that Haskell is really, really nice uh, to start the project with uh, when you are able to do a lot of decisions. And um, I, I don't mean uh, that uh, you need or you don't need to use some more complicated features, but usually you, you, you need to know your team, you know the company and the product that you're building, your goals or the project to decide on how to uh, safely use some Haskell features or not. So you think like there should be at least one Haskell expert to guide this thing? That's maybe maybe a possible advice. Uh, yes, I guess it's absolutely necessary to have people with different levels uh, level of experience and uh, Haskell experience as well, uh, because it's it's actually very hard uh, even for advanced Haskellers to come into to come to some conclusions. Uh, design wise so it's important to uh, have people who at least uh, know some drawbacks or, or some approaches and have seen different sides of different projects I guess um, it's it's very uh, it's very important in Haskell as uh, there are not a lot of opportunities to get mentorship from other people as there are not so much people know so much uh, material courses and stuff and um, actually we recently were working on the project learn for haskell uh, this is an online course for haskell starters uh, starters and beginners and we have seen some um, uh, we have uh, seen people um, doing Haskell from zero and we saw what actually problems um, they are usually encountering when uh, getting into Haskell. And uh, yeah, most of the people said that 
uh, they wanted to learn Haskell a long time ago, but uh, they couldn't get into that. And with mentorship, with a constant um, people you can approach and ask things, it's, it makes it much more approachable. The same in the company. If you don't have somebody to discuss things with, I guess uh, it wouldn't be uh, that maintainable in the end. So you mentioned learn for Haskell. If I remember correctly, that's uh, well something you've done for Oktoberfest so people can learn Haskell by uh, sending PR. So I haven't, I haven't uh, take part myself, but but I wondering whether you can explain a bit more how it worked because it was a bit you know like Oktoberfest is about hacking seems uh, different from learning. So I was wondering how you managed to combine both things. Yeah, I can uh, share some insights. So as you correctly mentioned, Oktoberfest is usually about contributing to some projects. So this is initiative to like, gain people attention to the open source, to combine efforts and improve other projects. But we were thinking that it's really a pity because you not always want to contribute to other projects or it can be really hard. So some projects are big and sophisticated and even with uh, a great support and even if the open source library maintainers are like superb, it still might be challenging to contribute to other projects. You still just want to learn things or that should to have fun. So we came up with the idea just like a Haskell course where you can just learn Haskell but still participate in Hacktober phase to get to win the Kotobir first prize and to learn something new. And the course is like just there are four uh, files, it's four chapters course, because for to finish Kotobir first, you need to submit four pull requests. And the idea is that you uh, finish each chapter is a separate pull request and the whole information, all explanations are inside this uh, course, uh, in, in this file. So you just open the file in your favorite IDE uh, we recommend the uh, VS Code because it currently has the best ID support uh, in the Haskell ecosystem. But yeah, it's just really nice. You install all the tooling quickly and install get ID, ID. You open the file and you can just read all the information. So we provided all the necessary information in the source code files. So you just read the comments and you don't need to read additional resources. And you solve exercises along the way while you are reading. And it was challenging because uh, Haskell is different and there are many things that can be explained, but uh, like people ha don't have a lot of free time. We don't want to have like a huge course and we don't want people to read uh, thousands of manual pages. So the, the challenge was to have a conscious explanations, but at the same time helpful. So like the like golden balance, they don't need to read anything else. And it was the main uh, difficulty. And a lot of people really like solved uh, Many, many exercises, a lot of people solved all our chapters and they were really into the course. So we have people uh, who like were, who were intimidated uh, by Haskell by, for multiple years, but this course really uh, helps them to get involved in the Haskell. So they were able to finish it in like e evenings and understand the language. And it was really nice. Nice. So, yeah. I actually wonder how you could uh, have like a, a a full course like this, you know, if you had I enough time to 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 do this, uh, whether that could scale to to a whole programming course. Maybe we we had for Haskell um, one hundred and eighty seven participants, uh, and we reviewed uh, more than four hundred PRs for for a month. Uh, uh, I guess if it would be not Haskell course, but, but some uh, general programming course, there will be much more people, so much more resources would would be needed for that to do that. But that's that's an impressive number anyway. Like for yeah, that's a lot of code to review. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> so you know, continuing to to all the nice work you do uh, on on open source. Uh, Something that that I that I I was kind of amazed uh, when I opened the the Kvainik webpage. So Kvainik is sort of your I don't know how to call it your organization uh, to for open source, right? Yeah, that's correct. 
So, so there are like a lot of projects like uh, covering all of these things. So, so it's it's super nice. But by, I also was was wondering. So did you start many of these projects because of the gaps you found in the Haskell ecosystem that now you sort of like uh, are no longer there, or uh, did something just start because you wanted to explore a new things to do to uh, to do things you know like they, uh, I, I know that that for example in, in Haskell uh, there are as many as many lenses libraries are JavaScript frameworks so so uh, there are like tons and you came up with with a new one so so I, I wonder how you how how did you start all of these all of these projects uh, well, at the beginning of Kawainik, we didn't have any projects and we started uh, mostly with experiments. So we had a few ideas what we want to do. We just saw a few ideas what we would be really nice to have in the Haskell ecosystem. So we started to work on them. Our first two projects were uh, the Summoner, it's a Haskell scaffolding tool, and the uh, Tomland parsing library. So there was no uh, Tomel library with pretty printing and we wanted to explore the bidirectional serialization. So that's why we started uh, uh, Tomlin. And there was no easy way to create new projects in Haskell and that's why we started Summoner. But when we work, while we were working on the projects, we started to notice more and more gaps. So the more you're involved in the Haskell, the more you do, you just see opportunities for things that are missing. So you just want to do, but there is no such library. There is no tutorial or if you want just learn new things, nobody wrote a guide about this. So we're working more in, and exploring uh, new stuff. And regarding the Lens library you mentioned, yeah, we recently released a library called ProLens and it was uh, it was created for two goals, to experiment with a new encoding of lenses, with Profunctor encoding. There was no uh, library on um, Hackage with this encoding, I guess. And we also want to learn new stuff. So not everything has to be like production ready and solve every possible problem. We want to learn stuff and explore how it can be used and we gain some knowledge and maybe we can use it in other library and improve other code. So I guess uh, that's how it's going. Well, a bit, uh, to wrap up, uh, so I always try to ask everybody, you know, how, how you see uh, the, the technology you are using in this, in this case, Haskell, uh, in, in a few years, and also, what do you think is is the best fit? You know, uh, definitely, I guess you want to use Haskell to develop your new your new website. Maybe you can, but but uh, it always looked to me like more server oriented. But maybe you can point point people uh, to a few places where you think you know, like Haskell shines, and that's a place you know to put your money and and start uh, developing in Haskell. A really nice question. I, I always ask myself this question uh, because uh, in Haskell, there are a lot of issues in communities, gaps in the libraries, and some things that are not clear from, from the first side. But also, uh, there are no any other languages currently that I would like to uh, spend more time at instead of Haskell. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, you, you correctly mentioned that um, Haskell currently is mostly a backend language and um, some projects that were doing uh, uh, more, more functional or frameworks for uh, front-end part uh, are not ready yet, I would say that. Uh, so it's very hard to uh, create clean, uh, Haskell only something um, uh, at all. Uh, so for me, I, I don't actually know uh, clear goals of Haskell, where it's going and what's going to be. But I hope that um, it's starting. Um, recently, it was announced that uh, Haskell Foundation uh, is going to happen to Haskell. So probably this is something that will help us to see clearer how to improve the language, to uh, see the gaps, uh, and see how it could be uh, improved later. 
Yeah, as you know, Haskell is used in many areas and it's possible to write uh, everything like uh, healthcare, mortgage platform. Uh, I'm working in the finance area and uh, people, I guess, mostly use it for backend, but also for compilers, for DSLs, for many stuff and even for websites. Maybe it's not that uh, straightforward, but it's totally possible and you can have maintainable websites and even mobile applications. You can actually write mobile applications in Haskell, but it would be nice if we can uh, like make Haskell more approachable for everyone, make it more usable and focus on, area, on some areas on improvement where we see it. But it's a, in the end, it's a general purpose language and it can be used for many things. Well, so uh, thanks for this uh, nice discussion and all your insights about, about the Haskell community and how you can uh, use Haskell and, and how you, you know, how you, I'm, I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that you managed to, to review 400 PRs in, in one month. So I'm, I'm still processing that. Uh, so thanks very much, uh, for your time and well, also, uh, thank you very much for all your, all your great effort in, in making Haskell for more approachable for everybody. No worries. Thank you for having us. Thank you.